All right, and hey everybody, welcome to the Chew Stream. Today we got a special Chew Stream. This one is being broadcasted from the new Imaginism Studios house, uh, just near Montreal, Canada. So, um, just to give you guys an idea of what happens on the stream. Um, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a fun way of just kind of once a week we break away from our computers or our, our work work, I guess, you know, the stuff that we get paid for, our assignments, our homework, that kind of thing. And we just sit around and we do some art. We do some art that is just for us, you know, something that's just fun and and uh, relaxing and you know it's all, it's all about really just getting back to the roots of why we became artists in the first place so uh, how this works just give you a couple little um, pieces of advice if you have questions for me you can post them here for questions please post them here bit.do slash may 22nd hyphen chewstream Okay, hope everybody can hear me well. This is actually looking, you know, usually when I do these streams, they've been a little fuzzier. But today they look actually really uh, clear. I'm, I'm using the live stream uh, iPhone app, in case you're wondering. And let's start off how we usually start off these uh, streams. You know, it's, it's always great to know that there's other people out there just like yourself, hungry for knowledge, hungry to be an artist, really, really determined to succeed, you know. Uh, the more of these kind of people we surround ourselves with, the more inspired we become. Your network of friends and artists is something that should be very valuable to you, you know, so... Definitely um, continue to look for it. So, anyways, what there. So, I anyways, to give a I want bunch to give a bunch of shout outs to those of you that have made it onto the stream. Shout outs to those um, of you that have. You know, where are you from? Where are you from? I'd love to give some shout outs here. There's Spain over here. There's. There's. Uh, well, it's definitely in Spain. From Vietnam, there's Israel, Argentina, San Diego. They're going to all start flooding in now. You know, Germany, Argentina, again, Portugal, Netherlands, Dubai, right on. Saskatchewan, right on. Germany. Lots of Germany here. Italy. Fantastic. Really, really great. Um, for those of you that want to ask me any questions, you could type them to... Or you can go to the URL bit.do slash May 22nd hyphen stream and that will take you to a Facebook post where I will be looking to see, um, you know, if there's any questions that anybody wants me to answer. It's not like I have all the answers, but, you know, I can definitely use my experience of being a freelance artist, of being a person that's had his studio um, successfully run for just short of a decade now um, and the main thing is there was a lot of things that I didn't know when I was starting off that I would have loved to know you know just I didn't have the resources to find anybody that that could really tell me so this is kind of like my way of giving people an opportunity to just hear what somebody has to say that perhaps is doing the things that you would love to do. So let's get drawing. At the end of the stream, sorry, at the end of the stream, um, I'm going to choose somebody at random that shared the 
post on Facebook and give this drawing out to. So, you know, if you like a chance to win this drawing, all you have to do is share the, the post on Facebook. Um, I want to ask you about your, this is one of the questions, uh, I'd like to ask you about your experience with working together as a group with other artists at the beginning of Imaginism Studios. Any mistakes you learned from and, or learned from, and what is your advice for teamwork when doing a project? Yeah, leadership, you know, teamwork. Actually, I was talking to, um... I was talking to somebody the other day and I was just saying, you know, in every industry, in everything, the, the skills that are kind of like the most important to excel to levels uh, beyond your own capabilities is to learn how to manage, learn how to work with people, learn how to, you know, be a leader, be a team member, that kind of thing. That's that's how you get even more done. You know, one person might be able to catch a rabbit, but two people might be able to catch a deer. You know, where um, if you try twice as hard, just one person, you might not be able to catch a deer. I don't know. I don't go hunting, so I don't know how hard it is to catch a deer, but you, I'm sure you get my drift. Uh, What other things? I think one of the things is that um, it was really great having constant meetups, like very, very quick. What are you doing now? What are we, you know, can I get your opinion on this real quick? That kind of thing. It helps to keep everybody together. It helps to keep everybody uh, updated on what everybody else is doing, which is really, really nice. Keeps it everybody on their feet. Um, another thing that really helped was as a leader, you want to make sure that you are asking people to do things that you would be willing to do. Right? I generally, I stay away from asking anybody to do anything that I would not be willing to do myself. And then the other thing is Nobody's going to work like super hard when they know that you're not working super hard. Not nobody, but a lot less people. People that are more talented than you, people that have more drive than you will eventually go away. So you as the leader must have ultimate drive, ultimate sacrifice, ultimate everything. Um, to keep the top people near you, I think. Uh, it's definitely a surefire way so that people have less, less excuses are, and are willing to sacrifice a bit more. Um, there's another question here. Flavio, what's up Flavio? F Flavio ha is one of our uh, former in-house workshop students, my buddy Flavio. Uh, you know, help to uh, help to get the in the new in-house workshop ready in Montreal. Actually, if you guys want, you know, I'd love to show you guys my view here. It's just beautiful. Um, I'll try to go for a little tour later on, but you can see this is my view. This is a beautiful lake. There's a tree house. If you want to. Yeah, I do a little treehouse thing. It's a foosball table for those of you that like foosball. And it's just one of the rooms. You can see the house keeps going down there. The house keeps going down there. You can see that there's a pigeon coop right there. That's what that room is. That little side room jutting out of the house. So the whole entire idea behind this place is to make the absolute, you know, ultimate artist paradise. Um, you know, something, some place where everything is just so nice and relaxing. 
where it's the perfect place to get intense about art and learn all sorts of awesome stuff and really push yourself to the limit. Wonderful little contrast. And there's actually, you know, fish in the lake and everything and so it's it's been wonderful. I'll show you guys a bit more. Uh, time permitting, I'll show you guys a bit more because there's a lot of cool stuff. There's like a frog pond just downstairs. There's um, a little area to put rabbits. Uh, just all sorts. Anyways, um, let's go to the next question, the Flavio's question, sorry. Flavio, uh, I hope you're having a blast in St. Julien. That's the place where uh, the house is just outside of Montreal. Uh, my question for you is this, do you have any tips to sharpen, to sharp your skills even when you are not able to use your hands to draw? I know you have an injury history and I'm curious when your arm is in bad shape, what do you do in those moments? Um, you know, something that I used to practice heavily while driving, <laughs> I don't do it as much anymore because I was getting really distracted. But you could do this anywhere where you just look at anything. You look at your view in front of you and you start thinking, how would I paint this? Either a lot of times I would think, how would I paint this in Photoshop? You know, and, um... It really, really helped. It really helped to, it's difficult, it's not very easy at all. But you want to try to really visualize every little step, clicking on where am I going to click on the color picker to get that tone and all that stuff, right? And when you do that, you'll see that um, your ability to process and to simplify will increase quite a lot. Another really good exercise that that I really uh, like to do and really brought a lot of progress to my art was uh, I would look for movie stills. You know, movie stills, nice high resolution movie stills. And then I would, you know, paint them, copy them. And then I would think about what does this movie still inspire me to create you know perhaps I'm just taking some of the lighting perhaps I'm taking a little house that's in the background perhaps I'm taking the beard of a, a guy that I saw on in the movie whatever it is and use it to inspire me to create something else using things that I've learned from copying from studying that image Right, that seems to really help as well, um, even though that one, you actually have to do, you really should paint. <laughs> uh, but I hope that answers your question. Ressa asks, uh, or this person says, I'm a freelance artist, 2D animator, and have been trained for a year in animation. Um, I want to do... I want to have a more solid educational background. And you probably have answered this question a lot of times in the past. But I'd like to know if it really matters or not uh, that you get a bachelor degree in animation. Okay, what are the pros and cons in studying in art animation school? Well, you know, I went to school I went to school for animation, so um, the best thing about school was that you have deadlines, you have classmates, you have, you're, you're not in it alone, right? So if you're not very disciplined, I definitely recommend school. Um, what does a bachelor degree do? Not much. Uh, it might help you if you are, um, if you want to go to a different country, you know, it'll help you to get your visa. I've never been asked for my diploma, and I wouldn't even know where my diploma is if you asked me. I probably lost it a year after I graduated because 
nobody asks you for your diploma, generally. Unless it's like to do with some sort of visa thing, I would think. Um, as for, you know, what are the pros and cons of, you know, art animation school, another really good pro is that you start building your network. You know, most people get their jobs not from their skills as much, but from people uh, not from, sorry, somebody just came in, but, um, yeah, people usually get their jobs from the people that they know, not from their skills as much, you know, not from anything else, but because somebody recommended you. Yeah, this happens because when you're working in somebody else's studio, when you're working in-house, all of a sudden those people have to deal with you. And if you're not a nice person to deal with, it's going to be a brutal time for all these people in the studio that might have been really happy before. So, it's, um, you know, network is huge. Having a network is just huge. What other things are important? But you know what? The biggest uh, disadvantage for school, for a lot of schools, not every school, but a lot of schools are tremendously expensive. Let me just put this, you know, little thought in your mind and see what you think. You know, um, Some people end up spending over $200,000 for their school. If you can afford that, then great. But if you can't, you know, is that the best investment to get a loan for $200,000 and spend it, you know, in four years? And uh, it's not on equipment. It's not on really anything except for school. Right, I would urge you to think about school in the same way that you think about a car, or you think about any kind of investment. Um, per, you know, car is not an investment, but thinking about it as an investment. Is this the best use of your money for the best investment, for the best return? Right? If I had $200,000 and I was very disciplined, I would probably go out there and I would, you know, read the best books, take the best workshops, seek out the best artists, do the best, you know, online classes. And then you'd still have a ton of cash left over to buy yourself a sweet computer, great art supplies, all sorts of awesome things. Uh, that would totally be much more logical, in, in my own opinion, to start your career off right. And that's from somebody that went through the whole, you know, school thing, but also did a lot to educate myself, you know, on art, on uh, drawing, painting, animals, life, you know, <laughs> so school I feel is for the less disciplined, which is totally fine if you feel like you're less disciplined, it's not something to be ashamed of, everybody has different stages in their lives. Um, let's go to another question. Do you have a warm-up routine? What gets you going in the morning? Well, I try to always do at least a little bit of drawing. At least just just some sort of sketching uh, in the morning. 
no matter if it's five minutes or you know an hour and a half, I'll always try to do just a little bit. <laughs> if you could hear that, that's people in the house. Um, what else do I do? Well, my daily my daily warm up routine it, it starts actually at the end of my day f from the previous day, where I would write down the things that I want to do um, the next day. Right, that way I could just wake up. I don't have to think about things. I can just go to the first thing, second thing, third thing, fourth thing, so on and so forth, and then. Um, you know, things get done a lot easier that way. A lot easier. You know, somebody was writing something in the comments of my previous uh, stream, which I want to address, and it was just a, you know, something about tips on how to kind of boost your confidence a bit. Um, how important it how important is confidence and all this stuff, um, you know, and having a great career. I could tell you that when I was not confident, when I didn't, I remember sitting there and thinking, you know, I would love to paint realistic creatures to more like a realistic level, photographic level almost. Um, and I thought to myself, is that even possible? Is that even possible, right? Uh, you know, not knowing what my potential is or anything like that. The jobs that I wanted, I just wanted to work in the studio. I just wanted to work in any TV studio doing anything. When I was thinking like that, when I didn't have as much confidence in myself, where did my career go? It really went nowhere. I wasn't doing anything cool. You know, I, I was doing a lot of independent art at home when I get home from my, you know, not so fun job or whatever. But I wasn't really doing anything cool and I didn't really feel like my career was going to take off anytime soon. But then I started to, as funny as it sounds, practice believing in myself. Practice believing in myself. So what does that mean? That means I would picture myself doing the things that I don't, I barely even dare to dream about, like working in a live action movie, you know, playing a significant role on a show in the art department or whatever. Um, that kind of practicing just got stronger and stronger as time went on. Soon I was able to kind of really see it, really see that it was possible. So as funny as it sounds, that's what I would recommend for you. If you're out there, you know, really trying hard, really hoping to do well, but perhaps not truly, truly believing in yourself as much as you should. Because really, you do have what it takes. You really do. You know, if you have a pretty you know, good brain, an average brain with some pretty good eyes, you know, at least one hand or a foot that can carry a pencil, then you have what it takes. That's the best thing about art. It doesn't take too many physical requirements. It just takes a lot of uh, patience, dedication, hard work, and that's what makes it so hard. It's much harder for a lot of people that aren't as passionate about art to spend that time to get good. Right? And that's why people think art is so hard. Um... Ressa also asked, is online schooling workshops much better? Again, this is something where it depends on you, Ressa. If you're a very disciplined person, I would say hands down, 
online schooling workshops are much better because they're a lot cheaper, number one. And number two is usually, you know, you can find, and this is general, okay, there's a lot of fantastic teachers out there, but usually you can find uh, much more accomplished artists out there to teach workshops, to teach online. Um, and if you want to have those top jobs, if you want to be working on the top, top projects, well, what is better? Logically, would you want to learn from somebody that's actually doing it? Or do you want to learn from somebody that teaches it but has never done it? lots of things happening in the house right now. Not everybody knew I was broadcasting, so I apologize about that. Um, yeah, so online schooling, workshops, that's where I learned most of my stuff. I would say if I had to give it a percentage, that's where I learned probably 80-85% of my stuff is from just books and even better video and even better online classes and definitely a lot of awesome workshops um, that I've attended in the past it's been so helpful because people you know the best techniques take years and years to develop but only minutes or maybe a couple hours to explain to you. That's the beauty of wonderful, amazing techniques, amazing knowledge. Because the knowledge is distilled in a way where it's so simple to explain. Yeah. So, let's uh, try to see if there's Anything else that I'm missing? I don't want to miss any other questions. Okay. So somebody's asking, uh, Daniel's asking, how did you make the switch between on location and working um, from your artist paradise? How do you motivate it to skeptic clients that's a great question okay so kind of like the story behind that was um first first off you know we're paid as designers to design so many things cars appliances you know movie characters illustrations all these things that we are paid to sit there and design Yet so few of us sit there and think about how we want to design our lives. I encourage each and every one of you to just put it down. Put it down on a piece of paper. Don't be scared. It's not going to do nothing. But put it down on a piece of paper and just look at it. How would you want your life to be? Design it. Truly, do you want a super gigantic house? You know, a lot of people would probably say, no, I don't want a giant super mansion. I want something that's quite spacious, quite big, but nothing like a castle. You know, or perhaps you do want a castle. Perhaps you don't want to drive to work anymore. Perhaps you want to travel a lot more. All these things. So that's what I did. I started to really think about these things and started to go, okay, well, what would... I like my life to be like. And a big part of it was I wanted to travel. I didn't want to drive to work. I wanted to be my own boss. All these things. So 
when I was working on Alice in Wonderland, um, at a point I was asked if I could move down to California. And I said, no, um, we can't. You know, we have mortgage here. We have all sorts of things here. We have employees here. Uh, we're not moving. Do you think it'd be okay if we could just try to work from Toronto? And if things don't go well, then sure. Um, and we can bring it up again and talk about the possibilities. Um, you know, moving... Actually, at that time, it was moving to England because that's where they were... Uh, filming a good portion of the movie. So we said, you know, is it okay if we stayed? They said, okay, let's try to keep going. Uh, you know, you from Toronto, us from wherever they are in London or in, in uh, LA. And it worked out fine. I never would have asked that if I didn't already kind of have a design plan, a game plan for my life. Um, it wasn't the next movie, but a couple movies down the road, it was with a real big studio, real big producer. You know, and then, well, I think it was DreamWorks. So, you know, they asked the uh, us to work on some stuff as well, work on a film as well, and then say, okay, and they say, okay, well, you're going to have to move down here, and we said, would it be okay if we, you know, uh, worked from Toronto? Um, that's how we usually do things, and, uh, you know, it's been very successful so far, and then they said no, you know, they said, that won't work. And then we said, well, it worked for Alice in Wonderland. And then they responded, okay, uh, yeah, let's give it a try. But if it wasn't for that initial, you know, that initial just conscious thinking about where do I want my life to go? How do I want to design it? Uh, this whole thing, being here, and later I'm going to be working on my uh, film work. You know, it's just staring out into this beautiful lake, doing my film work with uh, fishing rods next to me, just in case I get bored. Yeah, and this isn't in any way trying to... S um, I hope it doesn't come off as... Like I'm trying to say... Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, really talented or whatever, and, you know, I have a good life. But I'm more, really, my whole entire meaning is that it's all possible. It's all possible for each and every one of you. It doesn't matter if you live in Germany, Australia, Singapore, wherever. Because talent is talent, and talent is hard to come by. So if you show that you have great work ethic and amazing talent, a huge storage, you know, uh, a huge vault of knowledge, you will be indispensable. And that's when life gets fun. So keep at it, you know, keep at those super big dreams that you barely even dare to tell anybody, perhaps. Don't forget them, write them down even. There's power in writing things down. It means you really mean it. And there is no alternative. You know, write it down like a checklist. That's what's going to happen. And every day, focus on it. Think about it. Think about how you can get there closer and closer. Attach it to a daily routine. Like I attach a lot of things to daily routines. When I wash my face, I think about... Um, certain things. I'll think about energy. I'll think about the water is making me feel more energized. You know, whether it does or not, it doesn't matter. It becomes a placebo effect. You know, if um, when I'm brushing my teeth, 
I try to think about really picturing getting that message across. Whatever message it is I'm trying to say to people, I don't want any misunderstanding. So I try to picture you know, getting that message across, people really getting me, understanding what I'm saying, where I'm coming from, and uh, hopefully make some positive changes in people's lives uh, because of it. Let's see here. Let me see if I got any other... Okay, here's a question. Uh, my second time being on the live stream. Right on, Ashley. Sure you answered at some point. As a freelancer, where have you found work is more readily available? And seems in high demand or the best place to start out freelancing on when online. And as someone uh, first starting out with freelancing and still learning, what are reasonable expectations to, t to have when taking on clients? Actually, I think one of the first things is, okay, where to go to get, you know, good freelancing jobs. Well, there conventions, I would say that's the best place. That is the best place. Workshops is another amazing place to get really kind of uh, close and interactive with a lot of awesome artists. That's another reason I really like uh, workshops. Um, but conventions, it's just that just going to conventions is not enough. You need the online component of it all. You know, you need to be able to uh, tell people where to go after, after they meet you. It's super important to meet people in person when you can. Not absolutely necessary because, you know, I myself, I um, started the freelance thing, started the company, the studio, started getting in work before we started doing uh, conventions. So it's definitely possible. I'm just saying it's going to be a lot easier if you actually do go to conventions. Um, by the way, I want to mention that I'm working on coming to Berlin. For those people out there that were mentioning that they're from Germany. So look out for that in the upcoming future. School is on live in Berlin. Or... I think it's Berlin. It's Germany anyways. I want to go to Germany. Been meaning to do that for a while. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's any other questions that I missed. Yeah, there's, I guess there's a bunch. Natasha asks, uh, how did you overcome laziness on those days that you just don't believe in yourself? Thanks. It's all about, you kind of, uh, I know you know this, it's all about the mental game. Right? What kind of what kind of thoughts are you putting into your head? Okay, this to me it relates to working out quite a lot because those last reps you don't want to do them. Those last minutes on the treadmill you don't want to do them. You're tired, right? But it's this whole entire mental game of training yourself, even when you're bored, even when you're frustrated, even when you're you know, really antsy to just stop drawing, keep drawing. 
you know, take a little break perhaps, walk up, walk around, scream, whatever, and then sit back down. Or go back to your drawing, go back to your painting. You know, that's what it's all about. That's how you beat the laziness. You gotta, you gotta beat, you gotta stop listening to your body and brain and listen to your mind and heart. Your mind is the one that tells yourself what you would like to do. Your brain is the one that comes up with all these excuses not to do it. Um, let's see what else we got here. Do you spend time on any hobbies? Or do you not have any time to do all that? That's a great question too. You know, most of my hobbies deal with art. Most of my hobbies deal with art, but then there's also traveling. But then I kind of make that deal uh, related to art as well because I like to travel and then during the traveling I try to make it something to do with art, like workshop, like um, research for some sort of art project, something like that, something fun. Okay, so, almost done this thing. I'm not sure what it is, but it's been a joy to just sketch aimlessly uh, before I get down to my daily work. Okay, so, um, let's see here. Happy Thursday. Your new studio seems to have inspired a different type of drawing from you this week. Yeah, totally. The nature, you know. Uh, I would like to ask some specific techniques for staying aware and focused on learning while drawing. Do you plan in advance what you'll be focusing on uh, on practicing during a drawing? Yes, I actually do. Uh, you know, I'll have a specific thing in mind that I want to learn and then I bring out the research, you know, I collect the research and then I start studying the research and then I'll start taking that knowledge and doing something creative with it, something where I'm not just copying. So that's a great question too. Um, almost done this, so if you want a chance at winning this drawing here, all you have to do is go to bit.do slash May 22nd hyphen stream and there it'll lead you to a Facebook page where you can uh, share that Facebook post for a chance to win. I also want to take you around this house a bit because the house you know, it's brand new, super cool looking. I wanted to uh, give you guys a little taste of what the students go through when they come to Imaginism Workshop House. Um, the whole entire thing was brought around, uh, or was started because that's how we started our studio. You know, bunch of artists in one place where you're just nothing but eating, sleeping, breathing, art all day, every day. And it's the most fun, the most growth that I experienced, you know, to date. It was like, when you have, you know, a bunch of artists in, in the house, uh, you get up at any time during the day or night, and generally I would always find somebody up. Somebody up to talk to, to paint with, you know, do some art with. It was fantastic. So, you know, when we all started to 
kind of grow up a bit, get our own places, start moving out of the studio. I really miss that whole entire experience. And, you know, I got with um, my buddy T, Thierry LaFontaine, to create the Imaginism uh, Workshop House. And it's an amazing, wonderful, unique opportunity where we invite only four students at a time. And you would stay in this house that I'm at right now with just three other artists from all over the world. You know, we've had people from South Africa, we've had people from uh, Italy, Malaysia, Brazil, you know, all over the place, Colombia, even one time from the Arctic, from Nunavut. There was an artist that came from the Arctic region. It's quite incredible. The stories, the culture that that we get exposed to is just wonderful. Just a wonderful, wonderful learning experience for the brain and for the soul. So before I take you on a little tour of the house, let's give this drawing to somebody out there in the world. Okay, and I'm just going to go to the shares here. Okay, so the winner is, I don't even know if I could pronounce this or not. Manola, I'm so sorry if I get this wrong, by the way, uh, Manola Costa. Okay, so there you go. If your name is that, then you just won this. Well, Aboriginal uh, mushroom character and uh, yeah congratulations and let's go for a little tour of this uh, house I'll show you uh, what this Imaginism house really looks like okay guys all right so there's a little close-up of the uh, drawing all right so this room right here, this is kind of like a room where you feel like you're outside, but you're still inside, so the bugs can't get to you if there's bugs. And then let's go inside. Okay, so this is the living room. we got to put up those paintings still. Nice little workstation here. Here's the kitchen. There's a bunch of rooms down there. Go there soon. Kitchen table. There's Diana, one of our old uh, workshop students from Mexico, just chilling out. This is my brother Ben. He just came back from fishing outside. Nintendo. Oh, <laughs> shoot. Fireplace. This is really cool. This is a kitchen, or a little pigeon. pigeon coop, right? A little pigeon coop where you can keep pigeons. You could hear tea a little bit. It's doing a live stream. <laughs> it's one of the rooms there. Uh, this one's a washroom. You know, and then we have a, this one's my room, bedroom. Some paintings all over the place, about to be hung up. Here's another room, another typical kind of room that 
the students stay in. We got a gym over here. Got to stay fit. Got to stay healthy. Do more drawings. <laughs> And we're about to go down into the studio section. So you got the books. Let me find some uh, lights here. Foosball table, art supplies. So this is where um, students will sit. Each one will have a workstation with a Cintiq monitor. Instructor sits there. And you see their screen there. So it's, it's very, very much like um, how we had Imaginism Studios in the beginning, except a lot nicer. <laughs> you know, there's only four. Uh, students allowed. And here's another one of the rooms. Still got to put up a couple paintings today. And there's another lovely room with its own bathroom. And here's another room. So A lot of the rooms, they have their own bathrooms as well. And this door leads straight outside into the lake, into the backyard. Over there, you can see a fire pit where we'll have little bonfires and just hang out and talk. Tree house, shed, another sitting area. You can see there's just paintings everywhere, drawings and paintings everywhere. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about the outside and, and uh, finish it up. So that is a frog pond right there. It has about 20 little frogs living there. And then we have uh, that little hut there is, is for, you know, chickens or bunnies if we want another little pond and that's that's pretty much it there's one of Kay's paintings uh -huh. yeah there you go so you just got an exclusive tour of the Imaginism house there's T, your instructor, or the instructor at the Imaginism House. Um, registration is open until, until May 31st. You know, so if you're interested in attending the, the workshop and everything, you know, just let us know. Okay, so there you go, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in for this little special edition from the Imaginism Workshop House. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the stream and hope I helped you know, answering questions. And, and I hope you guys have a great day. All right. So work hard, play hard, have an awesome day.
and uh, enjoy. Okay, take care everybody.